Hi, welcome to Lee Taken. This is Mika, and here at Lee Taken, I talk about all things witchy, craft related, law of attraction, manifesting, esoteric, and everything else in between. And today, I'm going to talk about what the title says um, how I use uh, witchcraft to finish a book that I'm working on. So, if you've listened to this channel and probably my Lee Taken vlog channel, I've discussed that I'm also a writer. I write, I've been writing a series. Um, and I've just saw nothing's published yet, so I'll, believe me, I'll share that when it's published. But um, today I went to go work on uh, the book, and I'm taking another opportunity, and I'm calling it an opportunity to uh, plan out my book a little bit better so that I can stop running into sort of stumbling blocks and dead ends. So, being proactive, so I just reached a point where I was having a almost a reaction of anxiety once I attempted to work on this book the, this morning. So it, it was actually overwhelming. I actually, um, it was it was overwhelming. It was a very real sensation of just feeling like, um, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, this is too hard. Uh, but then it, there's like a battle in my head of not really, it's not that hard. You know, you just, you're struggling with staying dedicated to it and blah 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 like I'm having this inner dialogue with myself and it was very overwhelming and um, not so easy to get by so uh, what I did was I said okay well let me go ahead and um, do something above myself but using my own inner power <laughs> to rectify the situation um, I am a practicing witch I refer to myself as a cottage witch and with that means that basically in my, the way I see things within my realm, I feel like I can resolve my issues using witchcraft <laughs> um, within my realm. Now, I know for some people that, you know, they, you might snicker, you might kind of like I just did, um, or you might hear that and say, what is she talking about? Not every problem. Okay, well, since I believe I'm a witch, I, I am a witch, excuse me, I don't believe, I, well, I believe it and I am, um, and I actually practice witchcraft. So with all that being said, you know what? Everything I do is going to be laced with that energy because that's who I am. So technically, what, even when I'm solving something in a mundane way, uh, because I practice and I am who I am, guess what? You're still getting, you're still getting witch vibe. So I'm still using witchcraft to solve uh, a lot of issues problems things like that so this was no case this was not a different case um i would be using witchcraft for my it's not even writer's block it was just there was something else going on there was a some blockage um to get a little bit more spiritual on it i felt like there was a blockage and that there was something going on mentally internally it was manifesting in a physical way um, of this resistance so it's like I was bouncing off of a, um, a wall and um, for every bounce it was painful and that was the anxiety and uh, I began to tighten my like my muscles tightened up I just I did not feel good and all this because I simply tried to work on what I said I would work on I to my planner and everything I planned everything out of what I'd be working on this morning I woke up early to do so so I thought this is really interesting let me explore this rather than run from the feeling. So I needed to get myself to a place where I was a little bit more <laughs> receptive to magic and even thinking out spell work and things like that. What, what can I do? So crystals help, um, breath work, so, which will also become a means to my energy work. So here's what I did. Um, I decided I wanted to have some sort of working to combine creativity and passion to carry me through the process of completing the actual book that I'm currently working on, let alone, and also, by the way, the series. And then furthermore, the, out, the overall outcome of what I want to happen after that. But that was um, what I was basic, that's what the spell was. That's what my intention was. So, um, once I kind of figured out the, the major questions out of why, why, because I'm having challenges, 
um, a bit of imposter syndrome, distractions, self-doubt, all that sort of stuff playing in my head, which I think created a mental wall. And I was having very physical reactions from that. Um, the how, the how is to set the intention. The intention is to combine. Notice the words I'm using. I want to unite creativity and passion because you can be creative but not passionate. There are people who can think if I work in a bakery, a bakery or if I'm a chef or something like that, I'm creating dishes, you know. Even if it's the same dish, I'm, I'm constantly um, creating th this, this dish. I'm just duplicating, but it's still, you know, creation. Um, but I may not be very passionate about it anymore or, you know, I could have fell out of love with doing it if I'm a baker and I bake things. You know, I know the recipes, I just follow it, but there's no passion behind it. Um, in the same way that I don't want to have a bunch of ideas, being creative, and um, you need that energy, that fuel to get the get out of the creative, the creative state and see the finish, what it is that you created, what you manifest it. So that's where the passion comes into play. So those things need it to marry because I've had the creativity, but I feel like I'm missing the passion. So I'm marrying those uh, concepts so that I can finish the book. And I did this early in the morning, and I think this type of work is essential to do in the early hours of the day, preferably once the sun is up or as the sun comes up. I think those are great times to do it. Could I have done this at night? Yes. But I think it would have lent a different energy. Um, I was using my resources. I was using the, the power of the sun, the uh, solar rays, because they were coming through the window. Um, I could feel the warmth on my back. So I was using that energy as well to infuse in my spell. So I thought that was important, uh, the timing. And where? This is my workspace. This is my workspace for most of my workings, whether it's this, you know, this kind of working or over on the computer side. Uh, or even when I'm here on <laughs> YouTube, I have this in the background most times now. So uh, this is my workspace. This is where I craft of all sorts. Um, so I thought it would be important to do the work here. Um, and I already discussed my overall outcome again, which is to, you know, finish what I started as far as the book. Not only finish it, but then, you know, uh, complete the series and also simultaneously, um, simultaneously, I can't have said that weird, um, you know, complete the books in the series or, and not or, and. <laughs> Um, also sell them <laughs> and try to make a little money if I can off of them um, and at least get recognition because I'm really looking forward to that as well. I want other people to just enjoy what they read. Um, what I also did was use tarot cards to affirm and confirm um, what I was working, every, the working itself. And I like to communicate with my ancestors sometimes before, during, and even after any sort of magical workings that I'm doing, any sort of ritual or spell work, I like to do that. So I have uh, my grimoire here, <laughs> and I actually wrote down, this is obviously something I'm going to want to write down, right? So um, what I called it is a spell to ignite, pas ignite passion, drive, and creativity to finish writing my book. Um, so I used a red candle, which is still burning. Um, I carved that candle with my intentions. I anointed it with my anointing oil, which you'll see from a recent video. Um, I also used the yellow candle, and that has since burned out. That's a tea light candle that I use for creativity. Notice that I used, well, this was a taper candle at the time, a larger candle for the passion, you know, the fire, the fuel, and the creativity, I used a tea light candle, which was also anointed as well with my oil. The purpose of the sizing and why I chose to do this and this was just me thinking instinctively, intuitive magic. Um, I needed more fuel passion. I already have creativity. I'd like to continue that, okay, and even add more. Um, I'm, I'm open to that. So that's why I wanted a smaller essence, you know, a small, smaller mass, <laughs> physical mass of my representation of creativity versus my passion and fuel. Um, then I had just a simple white tea light candle to unite because I was merging, marrying. Remember, I was talking about combining creativity and energy. So I just I thought it was important to have another candle, a tea light candle, which that one 
didn't just, it did have my oil on it, but it also had uh, an herbal blend that I had previously created um, there, which had everything to sort of kickstart it and make it happen um, with a little bit more oomph and a level of protection around it as well. So um, I thought that was also important as well. Now, the crystals that I chose to use as well, let me get to that part. Um, oh, and one more before I get to the crystals, I burned an amber incense. And the purpose of the amber is when I think of amber, it takes me to the seat now, this particular season, if not winter. And, and I think amber is burnt, you know, when you amber is burning, like for me, I'm just, it, it has an essence of just burning and a little bit of burnt smell a little bit. So, um, of like burning wood. So what I did was, uh, position my incense in a way so that I know that the smoke from the incense would, uh, envelop the red candle. And the purpose of that was I wanted that to be a physical representation of something that I'm seeing in my mind's eye and that my intention is saying where I want it to sort of envelop and fuel and carry out the essence of as that red bandle, uh, candle burned to fuel the passion and I want burning desire you know that's what I was thinking with the amber so and also it's um, known for purification as well so fire in general is purifying so I wanted to keep my intentions pure I wanted everything to be as as I intended nothing more you know or nothing less, I should say. More is fine. I could have more. <laughs> nothing less. But I was thinking seriously that my um, intentions would be pure as I literally intended them and that it would go into the universe as such. Um, I use four quartz crystals at each point on where this little, um, my altar cloth is here. So I set up four and I wanted to amplify everything that I have, I was doing, all the energy and everything, the energy work that I was doing, I wanted to amplify it. Um, so that was the purpose of that. I used three um, magnets and that was to unify and infuse, you know, all three of those candles further. And amethyst was uh, at the top for protection of everything that I was doing. I wanted, you know, every, along with purification, I wanted no other out, no outside interference on the physical or metaphysical plane. <laughs> um, so that was that. Okay. And then, um, I use my tarot cards for divination. Like I said, I like to affirm and confirm with tarot cards. So, um, I had a very positive reading that to me spoke directly to what it was that I was working on or, you know, what the working was for. So I felt very positive. I did a three card reading initially, and it basically was a story for me of literally my past, present, and my future. So I just know that um, without going in, because I don't think it matters. You don't need to know what the cards were. <laughs> I don't think that's really going to help the situation, but just know this. It, it was basically my interpretation of the reading was that my, um, I started um, with an opportunity, you know, with a lot of good fortune behind me, a lot of um, seeds planted, very abundant focus, and abundance wasn't just about money. It was, you know, just fertile with creativity and things like that. So that was in my past. And then the present, it was basically, um, there's a lot of momentum occurring right now, but I feel like it's working against me. And, and that's kind of what I felt like this morning. Like, I don't know what it is, but I feel like this is against me. I don't feel like I'm, I'm flowing with this right now. Um, so basically that was just a message to let me know that I need to go with the flow. So whichever the way the wind is blowing, I need to go in that direction and use that momentum to carry me through. And then there was the um, last card in the past position which was basically um, letting me know that I can be, have my cake and eat it too. I can write this. I can do all these things that I see in my head and I can take all these ideas and put them down cohesively for others to enjoy. I can do that. And to me, that's having my cake and eat it too because I can think of all these wild things, but to think of it and, and actually be able to get it down on paper and to share it, yeah, that that's a big deal for me. That's That's the payoff, so to speak. 
um, the inner, and so the, I did that and then I did a separate reading because I like to reach out to ancest, my ancestors um, again just to align that you know I'm working for my greater good and you know we're all kind of you know kumbaya with it so I had a very interesting interaction with them by the way today because I did something a little bit different uh, than I have been doing I used to do this before is I would have uh, meditation music on in the background I just go to YouTube and I find something and I spent a lot of time grounding myself so one of the things that I used to do more often is have meditation music on and ground myself way like take a lengthy amount of time before like 15 20 minutes before at least before I start the actual spell work I'll have everything set up but I won't light a candle or do anything until I feel relaxed and grounded that was a very necessary tactic I had to do that today so I did do that and that was super helpful um, it, it, way beyond helpful um, because I felt like I was having a much better experience um, not much yeah much better experience uh, with this spell work than I probably have had in a while um, so I had a reading I did another reading and um, pulled out cards that were helpful to me as well and uh, just a message nothing letting me know not to do anything I felt like they were aligned with what I was saying as well um, actually a lot so <laughs> and then finally I just want to say that the energy that I used the energy that I raised was basically movement uh, movement and uh, self massage so what I was doing is so since I felt like there was a blockage I wanted to create flow so in a f very physical sense um, you know I massage my head the back of my neck um, around up ooh, I'm hitting the mic the throat my throat I was just you know just rubbing um, kind of like get, getting my voice out that's what I was thinking um, my thighs uh, like I just sat there in my chair and I just rubbed my legs rub my legs and then you know my arms I just massage you know like this up to the wrist and I just, I took my time with it, with the meditation music. I had all kinds of random thoughts going through my mind at the time. And I was just, to me, what I was also doing was just releasing, you know, whatever part of the blockage was. And it was random things that you wouldn't think had anything to do with writing, but these are distractions, distractive thoughts. So they needed to be released. So I was able to do that. And um, that, that took a while as well. And I allowed it. And I allowed that. To me, I felt like I was going partly grounding, partly raising energy. Like I, my body was, you know, kind of finding a balance. And eventually it reached a point where I felt like I can really do my breath work. So still, you know, uh, doing like massaging type work in my hands. Because I'm thinking my hands are going to type. You know, I'm thinking, you know, I'm all of this, I'm moving energy, I'm loosening everything up. So, as I did that, I began to feel, if you, once you have a massage, yes, you feel relaxed, but there's a sense of almost euphoria. Um, there's another current of energy that's flowing. It's not, sometimes when we think energy, we think like electric, you know, it, and it has to be something fast moving, something like that. Energy is energy, it's all different types of energy. So that more um, euphoric type energy, I was allow allowing that to build kind of along the lines of tapping into sex magic, that sort of thing. You know, the you let that euphoria, that, that build, you let it build, you know. And um, it was a long lasting, because I'm, I'm only massaging my hands, I mean, I'm not massaging something else, <laughs> so anyway. I'm uh, doing that, my arms, wrists, and so forth. And as I let that build and build and build, then I felt, okay, let me go ahead and get into my working. Now, this is something, when I did this, everything wasn't, it wasn't about speaking anything or saying anything. It was more or less connecting feelings and emotion. Think about what creativity is. Um, all the while, I'll be writing down actual words and dialogue, so words have meaning uh, for what I'm working on but um, this process that I was doing I think it was more about emotions and how my energy was you know flowing and the vibration I was on and attuning and aligning so that was what the work was not so much as me saying a phrase or saying some sort of charm or something like that 
And that was beneficial to me because if you're struggling with writing and things like that, trying to come up with another writing project, even if it's just three lines, can be very difficult. So this was more of a non-verbal working to help me be, <laughs> you know, verbal, or at least, you know, in the written word, you know. So that's what I did, and it was super helpful. So, all right, um, once I was done with everything, I'd let the tea lights and everything continue to burn. I'm still letting this candle burn, by the way. Um, and I cleaned up a lot of the other stuff. I left some of the crystals. I don't know if you can see. I left some of the crystals out um, that I wanted to um, just continue some of that same energy uh, that I've created. So that's still existing. And since then, I wrote down a couple scenes. Um, I kind of relaxed a little and nodded off because there was like a really nice breeze. We had all the windows open. <laughs> So I sat on the couch, I had my notebook, and I was write, handwriting out scenes instead of coming to the computer, um, and just kind of let my creativity flow a little bit, and, you know, rewriting some things, some scenes that I already did, and seeing if I can improve upon them. And, um, like I said, I kind of nodded off. I fell asleep. <laughs> I took a nap. I woke up, had lunch, um, and I felt a little bit more revived. Now, I... Um, Even, uh, let me explain this part because I want to talk about outcome. So I did all this. So I, my intention was it for me to, as soon as everything was done, the last thing burnt out or whatever, the candles, that I would just be like this most productive person. I would get everything done. That's not what it is because I, I, I'm careful about the, you know, being too productive because I'm. It's creativity. It's not about productivity. It's creativity. I, I didn't put that in my spell work. So it's not so much as doing something fast or getting everything written down really quickly or, you know, um, that wasn't it. It was more of once I do sit down, I don't need that block anymore. I don't want that block. So what am I doing to get that block? I want flow and I need the drive and passion because if I have the drive and passion, I'm going to want to sit down. I'm going to want to get into this book. So do I think it's working? outcome do I think it's working yes I was able to jot down some things even though I got sleepy <laughs> I kind of just let myself take that nap and I notice when I do any sort of energy work working ritual whatever magic spells um, I, I do get a little tired afterwards I'm a little sleepy and in this case I was nonverbal, so it was using like I said a lot of emotion feelings energy vibration um, in a very focused, intentional manner. Manner, So that wore me out, honestly. So I went to sleep. And this is after coffee and everything. Like, it made no logical sense, but I did. I went ahead and went to sleep. And I feel a little bit more refreshed, and I, I don't feel afraid of the work. Um, and I'm ready to get back um, where I said I would be and, and continue to work out the finer details of this novel and overall the series because as I'm doing the, the novel with the first book I'm actually laying the groundwork for the series as well so yeah it worked <laughs> it worked did I no by no means would I finish I have I don't have more than 10,000 words written yet so I'm not going to be done this afternoon but again that wasn't the intention I'm just working on details. I'm still in the plot. Well, I already started the book. I plotted it out, but I'm replotting it as part of National Writing Month, Novel Writing Month, which is a thing, NaNoWriMo. Yes, it sounds crazy. It's a thing, NaNoWriMo.org. I'll leave a link if you're also wanting to participate. It's next month. In October, is something called Preptober, and you prep for NaNoWriMo. It's a thing. Um, if you enjoy, and it's not all perfect. It's not, I'm not a, pro I'm not, published so I'm not a professional writer um, however there's pe people who are professional writers people who have published works things you can go buy right now and then you know you have people like myself and, and others who it's their first time you know they've never really written anything of that length the challenge is usually to write 50,000 words by the way so anyway those are my plans so I feel like I still have the drive I've I've put the drive and the passion back. I believe that I have. Um, it, not that it left. I feel like it's, it, I'm aligned with it again. I should say that. 
ah, oh, so I can get this done. I've made a promise to myself and I can hear my ancestor through my own voice because I am them speak to me in my mind and let me know this is what you said you wanted to do and you will finish it. So, you know, I just hear that kind of playing in my head. And that's also helpful for me as well. But yeah, um, that is what I did. So I'm sharing all this mostly because I'm trying to show with this channel um, what witchcraft looks like for regular witches, for lack of better words. Um, I'm not touting anything. I'm trying to show you how it really looks for me because this is how I would learn. When I was looking for YouTube channels, I was looking for someone like myself who would give an explanation, sometimes maybe show you, um, you know, kind of invite you in a little bit of what, what it is that they're doing um, in a very practical sense because I'm very practical minded. So I need to know how are you doing this? How, how are you doing this in re you know with regular life stuff and for me this is part of my life so insert whatever project you're working on whatever creative endeavor you're doing and maybe you can take away some of the same um steps and things that i did and create your own um i didn't look for a book a spell book because i have a bunch on my shelf i'm not gonna lie because i'm intrigued <laughs> and i'm probably low-key addicted to buying witchy books but uh i didn't go look for anything i didn't i never no, I don't look online. I don't look. On, no, I don't. But anyway, um, what I did do was just tap into, which I think was important, my own personal creativity, so that I could be able to complete uh, this this book and um, use magic to do so, and using my power from within. All right. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So I just wanted to share this with everybody. So hopefully this is inspiring to you. So thank you for watching. Again, I'm Mika. This is Leap Taken. And go ahead and like the video if you've enjoyed it. Please subscribe if you have not already, because I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. And if you have subscribed, again, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. And thanks again for watching. Bye-bye.